Well, I'm down at uh, Russell Powerboat's Eversley Fishing Lake, uh, but they've got a stretch of the land with some river, and the season's just open. So I'm going to go and have a look at it. I've no idea what's in there. Then the owner said that nobody he's no it fishes it. It's not been touched for 30 years. Lost well, a little fry in here, dimpling. This is this is not the river, guys. This is just part of the lake, and I have to get this bridge here swung across over there. As you can see, so I can cross to get to the river. I've got another river I'm going to have a look at. Might be if this one is no good. I'll have a look at the other one. Hopefully this afternoon, if not tomorrow. We're looking for the old proverbial one fish. Travel light, move, all I've got is just a a belt, a tackle belt with me. Just, but that's impenetrable there. When I looked at it in the winter February time, it looked much better. <laughs> now it's just a mass of weeds and pigeons. This is too shallow here. You can tell this uh, floods quite a bit, just by the way it's all backed up here. Treading where no fisherman has trod before. Or fallen perhaps. Look at that tree in the water. That's that's a snag city one, two of them. I don't know, I can't, I can't even fish there. Shank has a nice hole behind it. Don't go there Graham, don't go there. It's a bit sketchy. balanced. <laughs> Mozzie's a pain. No, I just can't hold it in that card long enough. No, too risky. It's going to lose the lure. I think people must come down from the other side. Um, maybe dogs go in there, or people go swimming, who knows? It looks pretty good through there. It's like somewhere in Borneo. You wouldn't think it's in uh, Hampshire, would you? Quite impressive what nature leaves if, if left to itself. <clears throat> There's a nice bend up there. Lure them on. You might not might see it, it's coming in the sunshine. I'm actually grateful for all this shade, to be honest. It's there, like a little whatever creature. But if I lose it, I'm not too worried. I've got polarizing glasses, but I'm not going to see too much. I'm fairly sure I will be losing this lure. On my footing. I can't see where the, the actual riverbank is. There's a nice hole there. And a nice lot of stingers as well. Yes. It's a better looking area. Obviously a public footpath goes over there. You can see it's, it's worn down. The public footpath does not come through here. Just check your vegetation. This would be worth fishing for, making a swim up there. Definitely. Better, better area altogether. Feels like rubbish on the bottom, it might. It might just be weed. The 
it would be nice to sort of turn a fish over even a flash of a perch or something or maybe even a chub ah that's better hear a lot of buzzing a lot of buzzing from mossies well I can't I think I'm skunk guys I, I cannot get into some of the areas <coughs> there's a the main lake where I've, I've fished there before I might have to end up having to throw in there but I just cannot sort of seem to see a swim because no one's no one's fished that for god knows 30 years I think they said I could throw this out here but I'm fairly sure it's yeah it's weedy well weedy see all the weed there if I keep dead still yeah I'm not going to be able to I'm going to be able to get out there just and have to wind fast in a minute because of the weed there here comes the weed well it might be stuffed on this river I mean look there's a bramble here it's taller than me this is all brambles that's a nightmare going through there plenty of bees I just can't get through I don't think there's any other swims to cast to on the lake here so you tell I've already scrubbed it here. scrubbed it out it's obviously going to be a winter venue see I don't even know if the if the river, the size is brambles. I know the river will be that way, but how far? I don't know what I'm sending out search parties, but I've got to look. There might be one hole with a fish in it. God, oh, it's the brambles that's the problem, guys. I don't think I'm gonna make it. I think I'm gonna make it back and all out. There's a hole there, one hole. If I can get to it. Well, as you can see, all I'm getting is leaves and rubbish. It's just an underhand flick there. It's a good spot. Very, very short areas when it's low conditions like this I would say if anything more of a, a bait fishing situation well I can't even get to the river there's a gap in the lake here in the overhead so at least I can get a cast out doesn't appear to be any weed in the margins it's very clear got a dark lure on I'm not sure it's going to do me any good. I think I might. I've got a red and white one which I've caught before here. So, Whew. hot, sweaty, mozzied, no fish. I just cannot get in this impenetrable. It's like the upper reaches of the Amazon trying to get there. I have two throws there, one throw there. If I don't lose the lure, put the bridge back into position so there's no bridge in effect, and uh, go and check the other river out, which is also overgrown but it's bigger. rubbish stopping the lure working look just bits of weed there one more I don't want to lose the lure it's the last one I've got that's it 
I feel like I'm in the Royal Engineers now. Hinge down there, as you can see. Perfect. Double overhand sailor's loop. Onwards to the next river. Right, back to where I fished in the winter. This is on the other river, much bigger. At least, at least I can see the river, although it's pretty choked with weed. It's got to be worth a few throws here. I've walked a long way. Just going to have a couple of throws through with the allure first, and then I might try a bait. Probably going to swing me too close to those rushes, I think. Yeah, it doesn't look that deep there. I would say. I'm the first one to put a lure through here at the start of the season. Let's try one way down there. Looks fishy, looks fishy in the other place, guys. I keep trying down there for perch, but nothing. You know, six swims, six casts in each swim, and that's me done. Move on. Oh, I had a bump then. Pretty sure I had a bang then. Also, by seeing where it's cleared, because it was a mat, a mat of uh, cowslips and stingers when I came up here about ten days ago. So somebody's been in a cut it, and that's why really why I've come is because I want to see where the swims are. So I know somebody's taken the trouble to clear this swim here. Why? Why is the question? This is what we need to know. Information. Knowledge is king. Stingers are at the moment. Probably a barbel and chub swim. Hmm. Kind of surprised there's nothing up under this bay here on the right. Ah, oh, weird. In some swims you can just see a feature. I mean, I don't think that, I think that's new that one in there. Got a feeling I had a big pike out of there. It's gonna be nothing now. I hope they saw that out. Another swim here, but then was this swim cleared here before that came down? Answers on a postcard. That was a very lucky cast, Graham. The thing is, I use dead baits, which I've got four. It's much slower fishing. So this way, at least I can I can cover some ground. See, I don't. I didn't really drop down there. Too late, I have. Well, river number two's come no good. I've only had an hour here, look, don't get me wrong. But I've thrown this uh, lure in a few little holes that I thought would hold apart. I've not had a bang or follow or anything. But look, all this field, I assume, is going to be cut for haylage, I guess. So a lovely setting. I haven't seen one other angler. Hardly surprising. It's like a jungle getting through. But what an afternoon. A fishless afternoon exploring two summer overgrown rivers. I could go to a big river, probably catch some chubs, some dace, some roach, that type of thing. And I could 
you know, there's no question with bait you do better but I just thought I wanted to check this out because these two little rivers were in my mind for some time and the weather we're having is unbelievable I just wanted to check it out really while it's still low summer level so I can see what's there and I can see lots of lilies lots of weed beds obviously I have only fished it in the winter I've not fished it in the summer at all so that is for our future I figure I've got a feeling it's autumn, I've always been told both of those rivers are um, winter waters, they get choked with weed and that in the summer, but hey ho, people do catch fish don't they? Right, let's get back and see what else we can find to entertain you people. And I've got to check my feet for ticks. Prime time for ticks now. If you can see what I've come through. I've just had half, not quite half an hour, 20, 25 minutes of sweating, heaving, wreck, pushing my way through this. It's definitely a winter water. Um, I'm trying another stretch of a different part of the river that meets the one I've been fishing. I had the uh, two blanks on. So is it going to be third time lucky on the blanks? I don't know. My favourite dropping spot is a great big branch in there. But from here, down the edge of this lovely willow, there might be an outside chance, so I flick around and see what I can find. Good chance of mosquito bites, ticks, anything like that. This long grass. I've actually got thermal wellingtons on. Lovely. Feet are boiling. Not one person has been through here. This is me. I've got a dead bait on. Barbless hook held by a little piece of rubber band there as per normal one SSG and I've literally got to watch I don't go in the water I have just four baits clarity's okay if I was a pike I think I would be eating that one There is a slight hole. I think down there. It's all looking very pikey there, guys. Oh, I felt the bit of a branch then. That's gone right through that, that little slot there. Hopefully I can just tease it off, yes. Look at it, it's just unbelievable. I can't even see where I'm casting. Oh, there's the edge of the bank. Be careful, Graham. Of course, in the summer, all fish are going to be a little bit lazier. The bait fish, the hunters, and the prey are going to be a bit more lethargic. I'll switch off until such time as I do pick up something, hopefully. I'll come to this pool, guys. Stamped it all down here. And I think, I think I've just had a pick up. Yes, small, small fish. I'll check the drag, because I've been fishing with, uh, with lures. Let's see what we got. Yep, yeah, we're on. Oh, could this save us? Could this save us? I can keep him out, keep him out, don't go in there. I need him to go out in the current, that's where I need him, out there. That's it, that's it, you go out there, pal. You go out there. Oh, he'll do nicely. 
he will do nicely. He's in the current. Camera off. No, no, don't go in there. No, no, we don't need you in there, mate. I need to get him less and fast, pronto. Pronto, pronto. Look, small pipe. I'll take it. Well, if I can. I got him, yes! So satisfying when you try and try and try and eventually you come up with it. Well, just a hunch. That's all it was that this particular river might be a bit cleaner, perhaps less polluted, less smoky looking than the other one. Just in the corner there. Still got my rubber band. Hook fell out. Well, people, that looks like an otter claw to me. They've grabbed it at the back. It's a pike, let's get him back. Not big fish, but I can tell you folks, I definitely was owed after coming through that lot. Definitely the first angler through here this season. Well, nothing in that other swim up there. Soaking wet with sweat. It's taken me five, 10 minutes to push through these netlets in the next swim, which looks nothing like it was in the winter, obviously. I was fishing down there, and look how it's growing in. And you get all this, this is awful stuff. I get it in my garden. This vine, it does die back, but it's horrible. So I, I can't actually fish at the moment, so I've got to get rid of this thing here without falling in. Here's the bank hitch. That's better, that's all I need. So I'm going to stand, you can clear off. I could do with moving that one, I can't be bothered. I figure if there's going to be a pike, it's going to be off the back of that, I call that spear blade stuff. It's awful if you get a hook in it or fishing it, it's game over. It's almost, you use it like rope, it's so tough. It's me, I dig it all out, but there you go, it's me. Um, that's ordinary rush, that's not too bad, but that stuff, it's horrible. It's really good for trotting a stick float down, but that's going to be another time. I think if I did come back, it should be doubtful to us a bit of rain in here. I've got two baits. I literally drop it just down there, in case. If I was a pike, everything's funneling through here, food, injured fish, anything like that, I'd be waiting any time from there down. Winter fishing and summer fishing, two different things. Well, that was a bit of tough fishing, a bit of jungle fishing warfare there. Anyway, that was with lures and I caught on bait. Isn't that strange? The lures didn't work, the bait did, but lures are good. And to find out the latest, the very latest in lures coming down the line, I popped into Torquay in Devon and I saw Hello Graham, been a while but it's great to see you back down here at Kitty Wholesale and um, yeah, well you're here, you've got your camera and I just want to talk you through some of the new stuff that we're distributing now and um, what we're going to talk about first is this range of fish lures that we do. Uh, there's a whole great range of it but this is probably the most famous uh, fish product which is the black blackfish minnow and it's a Rolls Royce kind of lure really Graham. There's a variety of different sizes, weights and colours. It's been very, very uh, copied by a lot of people, but... These are a bit of a bass, really? Bass? They, they, oh, yeah, they, these, these are primarily bass lures and they are a weedless um, with a cantilevered hook in it. Top quality components. Uh, they're not cheap, but they are the best. And there's a variety of different shapes and sizes from very, very small, tiny little things, such as your number one, uh, you know, five or six grams. There's a vast range of colors. The most popular color we've got in this one is probably the khaki. 
Um, and that's probably one of the most popular sizes. It's all sort of natural colour, that one, isn't it? That's all an all natural colour, yeah. I can yeah. see that, that's all olive green on the back. Olive green on the back. Yeah. They, they call it a khaki. They, they call this one the silver sparkle. But literally, the, you know, the, 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 the colour range on this sort of thing, you've got the barracuda blue. There's, 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 there's a whole great plethora of it in sizes and shapes. A weedless. Weedless and, and and probably weedless as well. They've got a great action and and some people swear swear by it and won't buy anything else. Just show them how that weedless works. That, that um, yeah, so basically, you know, you, you, it, it's you've got a groove in the back of the um, body there, which the hook sits in very nicely. On the back of the head here, you have a patented hookup system, which involves a vertical drop um, on the on the hook to the head, which means that if the hook um, if the fish bites it and it gets hooked up, it cannot, it cannot wiggle the hook off. Oh, I okay. see. So it's not like some you have a rigid hook in, hook in the jig head. No. This is jointed. This is jointed and it incorporates a vertical drop, which was the patented fish idea. Lots of people have tried to copy it, but they can't because it is a patent. And that's what it makes these lures stand out from a lot of the other types. That patent plus top quality materials, okay, all the way through from the latex, to the, the dyes they use. The, these guys are the Rolls Royce of fishing. And they're, and they're manufactured, what is it, it's a, a French, they're, they're, a French they're, originator? Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a French bait company fish. They're based in Brest, um, up in Brittany. Um, a top group of guys, to be honest. You have never met uh, a, a range of passionate bass anglers like this. What They really live, live the life with it and they know what they're talking about. Um, and it's great to be involved with them, to be honest. We are absolutely chuffed, chuffed to bits with this stuff because it sells itself. Um, it does a job and it does catch. Not only do they do uh, the blackfish minnow, which was the first sort of stuff that they do, but there's a variety of other patterns, which I shall just go over just quickly if I can. Sure. These, these are like a sandal one. These though, are the but... crazy sandals, okay, which are, I mean, they're beautiful. They're, they're so good you could almost eat the bloody thing. Um, each of these different types of lure, whether it's the blackfish minnow, the crazy sandal, okay, um, they do uh, a crazy paddle tail, okay, they're all designed to be fished differently, okay? So the crazy sand eel, that's designed to be fished very fast. It's when the fish are feeding um, and uh, fast currents, you fish it fast, fast retrieve, and the action you get is absolutely brilliant. Because that's got what I call limited paddle tail or battle tail. It doesn't the have a, battle, a, a, a big paddle tail, but the, the action you get from it yeah. when you work it fast is absolutely fantastic. Uh, on the other hand- That will go to sleep if you wind it very, very slow, it, as per, say, Pollock with a, I'm not using any sort of big paddle tail, it's a slow action. Yeah. So exactly. that one's just going to go to sleep, so you need to be aware to wind that one you've quite got, quick. You've, you, it's, 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 it's very much a specific type of fishing for when the fish are feeding, and that, that's when you would use something like that. Once again, you know, there's a variety of colours and sizes, uh, depending on conditions and, 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 and what's catching at the time. Um, converse to that, they do uh, what they call a crazy paddle tail here, which has got an inverted paddle tail with it. This um, produces a big vibration even when uh, retrieved at a slow speed. So with this one, you can just tie it on, cast out, and bring it um, and bring it in slowly. Um, another, another great lure. This one isn't a weedless, as you can see, but they do a version. That would be shore fishing for bass, pollock, yep. Yep. or out on the boat. Out yep. on the boat. Anything. They're 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 more the, this this sort of size stuff. Uh, shore and boat, really. They, they do, double. They double up. Yeah, they double up. They double up. And then they, they've got a variety called the Black Eel, which at the moment is one of my favourites, because this is just a work of art. Um, this is a weedless sand eel version. Okay, you can see same sort of weedless hookup system. Okay, um, if, you take a look, if you take a look at it, you can see it's a very neat thing. This has got a four gram shallow head on it. So you would flick this estuary fishing, pull it through the weeds, you know, the, the, the fish are hiding down low. They come up and grab that, weedless again. Um, absolutely beautiful. That's the black eel. And the latex on all of these, because I've been fiddling with them as fishermen do, and they're really, they look quite tough. Yeah. And, they, and they've, they've just got sort of body feel about them. They? <laughs> it's, it's, it's top quality latex, Graham. It's not um, your cheap Chinese knockoff stuff. A lot of people have tried to copy this sort of stuff, tried to get anywhere near it, and they haven't. And uh, 
there's a variety of reasons for that which I won't go into. These are, these are for specialist anglers in a way. These, these are the Rolls Royce fishing lures, Graham, and I've been in this business all my life, as you know. And, you know, we are just thrilled to be able to distribute this stuff across the UK because, um, as you know, we're famous for sidewinder lures. Yeah. Um, and this in, is, is an excellent level up in quality to a, to, to a large extent. Um, it's an excellent level up in price as well. But you've got some guys that won't fish with anything else. Similar, you've got some guys that, you know, Sidewinder, it's them all day long. Um, that's probably, if I'm honest with you, more a boat lure. And, and it's more for the guys that want three lures for a tanner um, that are going to do the job. You know, quality is still great. But these, and to coin a phrase, if you're a tackle tart, that's what you want. <laughs> you know, they, they, they really are a fantastic range of stuff. And there's a lot of it. So just going back to um, the Crazy Sand Hill, uh, which as we discussed is, is a lure that you've got to work fast. Um, in current, lots of, uh, uh, on a fast retrieve. On the la larger sizes, they incorporate a rattle, um, a glass rattle, which is buried in the body. You can see I have just pulled that one out of there, but if you feel them, they're, they're, they're inside. So that when you've got the fast retrieve action, you do get a micro rattle with it as well. Um, it's just another feature that the, the fish guys have developed and it works great um, because on a fast retrieve, the thing's going uh, a very fast action, you get you get the noise. You get the vibration. You get the vibration. Home in on it. Yeah, that's it. So that's, that's, that's a, a, a feature unique to the crazy sand deal. Hi Graham, uh, we were having a chat the other day about springers and you were saying, do they still make them? Well, my answer for you is yes they do. I've got a new one that's just come in, which is just like a plinking package for home. Um, well, either vermin as well, but something on the bit of the cheaper side because things are a bit more of a struggle in this day and age. So this gun's made by Hamley. It comes with a scope. I'm going to show you how to put the scope on the gun as well. So, so it's like a package, it's a package. package. So and we're talking through it. So we obviously chuck extra on the package by putting in pellets, uh, a gun bag and all the bits to go with it so you can go home and just shoot. So, I mean shooting will be as expensive or as cheap as you want it to be really. So, so primarily it would be a bit of target shooting and rats and stuff like That's that, vermin yeah. control. So, this is made by Hamley, which a lot of people might know the name, but it's uh, Wolver is the actual brand of it really. And uh, yeah, just a synthetic stock, which is a plastic stock. Um, it's a 2-2, two -two. if I spin it around that way, see, you might be able to see that there. There's a Hamley Black Force 400, so that's the model of it, and 0.55 mil is a 2.2 pellet, that's the, the diameter of it. And that's a spring, because I thought the springs were like old, out of date, and that was just all PTP right, so now. This is just a straight brake barrel, um, I always pop, when you have a brake barrel, I always pop it into my leg there, yeah. and I pull, you have to give a little crack to tap them open, Yep. and then you pull, so if you look there, I can let go of that, it's a lever now. There's a big arch, yeah, so it's yep. easy to pull. Whereas if I do it like this way, hard, yeah, a lot harder to, to break, yeah. So, and um, what I'm going to show you now is how to put the scope on because I get asked these questions, oh, can you put my scope on it? Which I'm more than happy to do, but for me, with my hobbies, I like to do everything. So, what we're going to do is we're going to pop the scope on here today and just try it around that way for us. You can see, take the camera. So is it important to get a position of the scope, not too far forward, not yeah. too far back, you so know, to your eye? Ideally, you want to bring the gun up to your cheek in place on your shoulder and you should be looking straight down the scope instantly. So you shouldn't have to move around, what I call it, if you move around the scope trying to find it and it's yeah. what I call a fish eye, you get like a black ring in it, it should be the whole picture without a black ring. So if you're getting the black ring on your scope when you're looking through it, you haven't got it positioned right. The way I think mine needs to come in, my old Diana. I think it we'll needs to come in because I have got the head moving forwards and backwards bit Might too. <laughs> we do need to do some posts out the back so we can bring it in and uh, beat the post in with that old Diana. It's probably strong enough. Right, let's have a look at. So on here, it's already pre-mounted, which is a complete bonus because otherwise, what you have to do is set them central for your crosshairs inside. Oh, of course, yes. So yeah. it could be rotated on those brackets. That's it. So it's pre-done. So. You say that's what they call a 911 dovetail rail. Sometimes you have these little stoppers, and that'll have a little a hole in it that if you get a mount with a post in it, you can pop it in place. 
But we're going to take this one off today just so we can get the scope right back on the. In that, it locks in that groove. little groove that's there. That's it, yeah, so that's what they call a 911 dovetail rail. So we're going to put that in there. They're quite tight from there. I say it's just like a blanking panel, really. So you see the little hole in there. That's what they're all off. They're always quite oily from there. Um, so that literally some some of the mounts you get will have a, a little pl a pin sticking out the bottom that sits on it. Like I a locator, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's like a locator pin, but it's more what you see on live fire stuff, which I don't think we're going to need to see it on this. So we've got single mounted scopes. Like on these ones, you get double screws. This is what they call a single screw. I would say these are a high mount. That's the distance from the from the barrel upwards, is it? Upwards, yeah, that's it. So I'm just going to place that. I always say so the side that's fixed, I generally place on the top to start with. Got two little sort of edgy teeth that's that it. lock in there, pinch in there. So they're grooved. So that's as far back as we can go. So we haven't got loads of adjustment on this rail. Yeah. Some guns you get, your rail might come back to here. Oh, as far as that. So then you've got more adjustment, but these are very... Uh, you know, they're an entry level spring gun to shoot at home, that's why we get them, so it gives people a place to start without having to spend a fortune. So, yeah. and of course, once these are done, you, you know, if they're buying a gun, you can set it up for them. Yeah, we can, we can set up generally. You'll find most of the guns I do in the shop as a package are generally already put together. So, and of course, you do a bit of servicing and you okay, do, yeah. um. So we're scoping in as well, you can we set do, them. Yeah, we do sighting in service, you can leave your gun with us and have it sighted up. Um, I actually take it off site because I've not got quite enough room out the back for the distances, we're sort of 20 by 30 yards. Um, so we take them home and do them on the farm. Um, so, but we do that, we also do servicing on the PCPs, like all the air stuff behind, especially like the HW100, which we've done a talk on before. Um, spring guns, all of it, we do chronograph testing if you want to need to know the power of your gun, especially shooting a club, they like you to just know that it is within its legal limits. How do you know with a 12 foot pounds on a spring gun? Is it some way measuring it, the air coming out or something? Yeah, yeah, see we've got a thing called a chronograph and it measures weight and speed. So you have to enter the weights of your pellets Yeah. and then it does with the speed going through and then you have to calculate it too and it gives you your uh, foot pounds of hitting power. So what we do is we could probably, I'll, I'll set up this scan machine one time you can buy and we can do a demo on it. Yeah. How it reads it, and it's it's quite interesting. So you know, like, like yeah, that. mine's an older one. Yeah, um, on. you find a lot of your older springs. So people remember like BSA meteors, things yeah. like that, or mercuries, and it's stuff. A lot of people who are probably in their fifties and sixties now would remember that as they do. They do indeed. A, child. Um, a lot of those come out about ten foot downs, whereas they yeah. call these sub twelves. Um, it probably kick out about eleven ish. So most of them go between ten point five and eleven point five, and no higher. Purely to do with weights and pellets to give you some variations so you don't go over your legal limits. And if you've got a, 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 a underpowered one, I'm going to say a spring, an older collector's type one yep. that people like using, can you fit a new spring to give you a bit more power? Is that yeah. what it is? So it's quite hard to buy springs and certain bits for guns now in the post sent home. They generally like to send to someone like me, being an RFD, that it goes to a, a valid place. You know, yes, it should yes. Be, which is fine, but yes, you can purchase a spring. Most springs are generally about twenty twenty five pounds. So not big money, but yeah, then obviously yeah. it's an hour's labour to fit one. Yeah. And it's not always just as simple as people think replacing a spring. So like yeah. some of the older stuff, like an original, um, difficult gun to work on. Oh really? Very complex inside for some reason. And they've got some are simple, some are very complicated. But yeah, it doesn't take a lot to change a spring. It's normally a washer. You'll have on the Mercury's. They have like an internal like. Um, I don't know what the wash is made of, but it breaks up. So yes, you'll yeah. find you'll fire your gun, you'll think this looks like there's dirt coming out the end of it. And oh, it yes. will be this this like leathery style wash that is broken it's up breaking over, up. over years and years and it's it's in the gun. So oh, that'd be yeah. interesting, yeah, I'll have to pop it in and yeah. uh, can you can you measure it up? Measure it up and we'll strip it down and have a look inside it. And the rats yeah, won't last it. any longer <laughs> at all, that'll hopefully nail them quicker. So that's the scope just placed on the gun. So that is what your gun would look like with its scope, which always looks better with the scope on it, I feel. Um, and then obviously on the sight side of it, they come in roughly sighted up, they're not, they'll never be spot on and everybody shoots slightly different. They don't do a factory um, default setting at 20 yards or something like that. So they set them to a rough zero, but they won't be spot on, you need to go and definitely shoot them. So on here you've got left and then the other way is right, they normally just list one not the other. So you know something is easy, you can see the clicks on these. Oh yeah, you can, you can hear them I think on the camera, yeah. yeah. 
So but what I find some people do is get really excited and they chase the hole is what I call it. So when they're trying to sight a gun, yeah. they hit the target and they follow the hole and keep turning to the same way as the hole yeah. and then say my scope won't sight up and it's out of sync and it is broken. And generally what it is is they've just gone the wrong way yeah, without even yeah, realising. Yeah. So you generally start at a closer distance, shoot at the target. I do my left and right first, which people might call as their windage. So your left and right, yeah. and then I do my verticals and my up and down. So I generally start at 10 metres on my left and right, and then I just move back, move back, and I set my up and down for my height, so if you're 20 yards, 25 yards, and then I, if I was shooting rats, like you sort of need to do some bits at home, like you were saying, yeah. I'd concentrate on shooting at 20 yards at target, so I know if a rat comes out 20 yards, you're going to get it. You'll hit it and, and do it properly. Yeah, you know, that's, that's, what, it that's what it's yeah. boiled down to, isn't it? To, it to, is. yeah. to get a distance that you're happy. Um, You've yeah. got the maximum power and yeah, everything. Definitely. So, but you know, this sort of gun, ideal for either a little bit of vermin shooting, to, yeah. you know, which it seems to be a thing, a problem this year, massively, or you know, ideal for tin can blinking in the garden, or just for like the paper targets, things like those. Yeah. And when you get a bit more good at what you're shooting at, you can go to the smaller ones on the back. Yeah. So yeah. it's reversible, which is quite cool. I, I can see green there. What you can see green. So. I should have probably explained those before I pop this on. So these are what they used to call iron sights. Um, probably because they used to be made of iron, but not anymore. A lot of them are plastic. So you can see there's a bit of a, a fluoro green. Yeah, a little too short. So it's almost though. like two bits of fishing line. Yeah. yeah. It's like two bits of fluoro nylon, and this is a red bit here. So if I was staring down it as an open iron sight without a scope, yeah. you would line up the red dot with inside the two green dots. Oh, I see, yeah, there we go. And if you point it out the light, it reflects the light through them, so they really glow up and stand out really well. Oh, I've never seen that before, so that's different. So, yeah, on some of the news, I look, the old stuff is just a blade, if you like, a hole with a blade at the front, and then so you go. Oh, good, girl. I appreciate you showing her that. I know some people like to uh, have entry level stuff, and if that's a whole package, they can come in, it's see you. It's a whole package, yeah. So, it's what I call a budget gun. Yeah. You know, starting about, about 160 pounds scope bag, pellets, rifle, yeah. you know, pellets, so you get something like that with yeah. that. And then we do these little black gun bags as well, which just sort of suit the style of them. Yeah. But yeah. you know, I think that's a bargain price to start off shooting. So it's a good place to start. It will do everything you want to do. And you know, you can have some fun with and it. And they can have a look at that. And if they want to go upgrade, yeah, they can upgrade. upgrade. I normally find most people being like we are, we, we end up getting excited with a hobby. Yeah. They start off where they get the, the basic, and then two weeks later they're back and going, oh, I should have bought the better one. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with it, they just get excited and they upgrade it, and they don't generally even chop in the old one, they keep it as well. So, there you go, easy going. Well, thanks to Grant for giving us a little chit chat, and Dave Kitty as well, one on lures, one on a 2T budget gun. I'm gonna be taking my old girl here not that old girl, this old girl, the original, into, into Grant and see if he can uh, check the foot pounds on it and basically get that sight so I'm scoping in on the vermin population. Reporting for duty, sir. We'll see you guys in the next film. Don't forget to watch TA Outdoors as well. See you next time, guys. Left right, left right, left right, left right, left right, left, left, left.